Thank you so much for tuning in uh, to this encouragement series as we talk about wives. Don't turn it off. Don't turn it off just because we're talking about wives. This is going to be good. It's going to be helpful. It's going to be encouraging. Trust me, God, God's got a lot of great things to uh, say about this. But before we go any further, we need to pray together. We need to uh, get our hearts and minds right, just get before the Lord, and just bring ourselves to Him completely. Uh, God, we pray a prayer of thanks. We thank you for the truth of your word that helps bring out your best in our lives. It shows us how in relationships like this husband-wives one we're going to be looking into, uh, it helps us where we work, worship, live, and recharge. So Lord, we pray that we'll hear what you're saying to us, that we'll know what the scripture means in the truth of your holy word, but also that we might be able to glean from it. We may not be a wife, we may never be a wife, um, but these are great truths to learn, to train others in, to help others in, in their relationships. So show us your will and way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So uh, just as a reminder with the encouragement series, the, the whole point of encouragement is to give you courage through encouragement to live boldly for Jesus Christ and to bring God glory. So we're going through the book of 1 Peter in order to help us to glean, um, as the other Christians have throughout centuries, what it is to be a good, godly Christian and then how we could take the truths of God's word and live them out each and every day. And uh, th this message is is so much into where we live. You, you may not be a wife, but you're going to be friends with one or know someone or have someone or uh, want to raise things up or, or help people to understand what it is it takes. So we go to the Bible to determine what it is. Now, now let me give the origin story of where marriage came from. Marriage came from God. God created marriage. Um, he created marriage and wants all marriages to experience and reveal his very best in each and every one of them. You go all the way back to Genesis chapter 2 and you'll see where God creates man, God creates woman. Then he has this curious um, phrasing in chapter 2 of Genesis verse 24 where he talks about how the man will leave his mom and dad and hold fast or cling to or or cleave to his wife. Now what's interesting about that, this man and woman dichotomy, that a man marrying a woman, a woman marrying a man, is that at this time, think about it, there, was only, there were no moms and dads on the planet. There was only Adam and Eve. But he begins that institution of marriage to go, once Adam and Eve have kids, and then their kids are going to marry, and, and they're going to leave Adam and Eve, and they're going to go and start their own, and from that time on, marriage has been that way. It has been a man and a woman coming together. They leave their family home and they go and start their own life and they hold the man hold fast to his wife. So this is something that God has, man, instituted from the very beginning before there even moms and dads um, marriage existed. So we're going to talk about those. So this week we're going to look at, right now we're going to look at um, wives and then next week, don't worry, the husbands are going to get theirs too. We're going to see the truth of God's word for husbands. Um, that's what's coming next. But right now we're going to talk about wife. So let's look at the one thing. I want to share this with you. I want to talk about this with you if you're listening to help you to understand the one thing about wives. Wives are precious and perfectly placed by God. The scriptures are going to bear this out in a mighty way. But in God's eyes they're precious. In God's eyes they're perfectly placed. And we're going to see how the the scripture really unfolds that. God can do, listen to me wives, God can do so much good in and through a Christian wife. God can do so much good when a wife is just working on her relationship, growing close to God, glow, growing close to, to Jesus, growing close to the Holy Spirit. They are so precious and they are so perfectly placed. In fact, the scripture says that basically there is no greater gift on the planet after salvation um, that a man can be given than a, than a good wife. I mean, they are of such high regard in the Christian faith. They're even more, they're in such high regard in the kingdom of God, wives are. So let's bring some context, let's bring some wife life to this passage. Now, um, God gives wives their purpose, true beauty, and hope. And the, the Bible has a lot to say about wives, but in this particular passage, we're not going to go there yet, but as we move closer to 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 1 through 6, we are going to see that God has all the answers, directions, and action for the married life, but also for the married wife. 
And he, there's just such good where he's in there. And can I, can I just say this to you? I don't know where you may find yourself um, in your married life or even if you're not or maybe you're not married but you have a friend that is, that she is a wife. There is so much good and so much truth that could come regardless of circumstance. If you're in an unhappy marriage, these words are for you. If you're in a sort of a pause button lukewarm marriage, God's words for you. If you're in a great, loving, thriving, strong, healthy marriage, these words are for you. And guys, you need to lead into this. I was just telling our teenage sound guy, he needs to take notes on this message. When he's looking for a Christian wife, these are the things that should rise to the surface because a good wife is a, is a blessing from God. A great, great, precious gift. And God has a great blessing for them. So without further ado, let's just dive in. Let's just, just look at the first two verses uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. So we're talking about wives. So likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands. So that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives. When they, being the husbands, see your, the wife's, respectful and pure conduct. So initially, here's what we're seeing right on the surface. Wives obey your husbands. Your pure and respectful conduct can win them to the Lord without speaking even a word. I have talked to countless um, wives. I have talked to many husbands who want to be better for their wives. How is this possible? How can there be any hope in all of this? And look what verse 1 just tells us. Look at the, the awesome power that God has at work in wives. What does he say? That by a wife's submission and subjection to her own husband, that when she um, does that, her actions can actually win him to the Lord without even speaking a word. How many loving and good wives pray for their husbands to be more like Jesus? How many wives and husbands on this planet are praying for each other to get saved because the other one isn't? Well, wives, we see here that you can be a first and foremost powerful instrument in the lives of your husband to bring them to the Lord. Do you want him to come to church? Yes. Do you want him to grow in Bible study? Yes. Do you want him to be saved? Well, your actions, your conduct is, is so powerful that it can literally be used by God to transform your husband in a good way. And, and the reason that that happens is because you're, you're all in in your relationship with God. You're all in with these. I love that little phrase um, that is there uh, in verse 1. It says, even if. if. If I was you, I would highlight that. I would underline that. Um, I would mark that up. So even if he doesn't obey the word. Even if you got saved after marriage. Or, or your husband isn't a good uh, Christian example. That you would then find yourself living in a respectful and conducting way. Now look, don't get me wrong here. I'm going to be super clear. If you're in a relationship that is harmful and abusive and hurting, you need to get help. You need to get out of that. You need to seek deliverance from the Lord and people in this world. But the Lord also speaks so powerfully to go, look, if you're married to a husband that doesn't love Jesus or isn't living to his full potential, here's your way through that. You live out your respectful relationship and pure conduct to the Lord. You live that out for him too. Because there's a chance that he may be one to the Lord. How great and what a precious. But I could just tell you from personal experience that when I've been with someone and led them to Jesus and they've been saved, I wouldn't trade that for all of the money in the world. To be able to be there at the moment or to know that I contributed in some small way to them being saved is just a thing I will praise God for forever. To have been there, to have had an influence. Wives, do not give up on your husbands. Live in a respectful and conducting way. Not because he's earned it. Maybe not because he even deserves it. But because you love the Lord. And he died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. And your husband's sins. So this, this conduct and submission takes a whole new light. A, a Christian wife can lead her husband to Jesus. So that he may be saved from his sins. By grace. Through faith. In Jesus Christ. Man what a great and powerful thing that is. To lead them there and to allow Jesus to do the work that you never can. You, you can't change a person's heart and mind. That's the realm and dominion of Jesus Christ. You can't make him better. 
But God's love for him, God's love for you can help you do things that you would thought were impossible a year ago. Or even last week. Even last week. So what's something a wife should always remember in her marriage? That her hope is in God and her actions can draw her husband closer to him. Where is your hope? It's in God. It's in Jesus. It's in the Holy Spirit. And, and your actions can make an impact that brings him closer to the Lord. A powerful and mighty testimony indeed. Let's look at verses 3 and 4 as we talk that. So wives, you, you can bring about the greatest change in your husband's life. And, and your respectful and pure conduct, that's what he desires, right? He, uh, a husband desires for um, respect from his wife. A wife desires and deserves, because she's the daughter of God, to be cherished and loved and pursued uh, as Christ loves the church by her husband. Which we'll, we'll talk more about that stuff next time when we talk about husbands. But right now for wives, we're helping you to see the great honor and position uh, that you have in the kingdom of God. Now, let's look at verses 3 and 4. So as he's speaking to wives, do not let your adorning, adorning be external. The braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. So let me just contextualize what in the world's going on? In the Roman Empire in the days of Jesus, a woman's worth was reduced to her appearance. She only had value based on how she looked and how she dressed. And it was just a way in which she, it, was, it was oppression, really. Persecution of the woman. And at best, and never to exceed, her position or place in society would be that of property. So a woman was, was never more than property. She would be thrown in with the livestock in the perspective of the Roman Empire. And she only really had value and worth if she looked and appeared a certain way. And some of you may say, well, our world's that way too. You're right, man. Women are just bombarded from a very young age that their value and worth is in their adorning and physical appearance. So what could a woman do in the Roman Empire? The only way she could get noticed, the only way that she could, could um, have any sort of what she would see was falsified self-worth was her physical appearance. The selling of her body, the showing of her body, the, the doing of things. And in verse 3, God's like, don't adorn yourself to that. Women, do not um, reduce yourself to the outward appearance. But instead of what we see in verse 4, the Christian faith bursts on the scene with Jesus. And begins to elevate the, the women in a way that, <coughs> well really quite frankly, they had not done in culture. So the Christian church comes along and says this through Jesus' example and how he treated women when he walked on this earth. He says, let your adorning be that of the hidden person of the heart with an imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. In the Christian faith, um, a woman is precious in God's sight, which it says right there in verse 4. She is always and will always be his beloved daughter. Those of you who have good and loving fathers, you know what it is to be beloved. Those of you who don't know what that is, you can know what that is in the Father God. You can know how that works. So Peter's saying to them, look, women, don't sell yourself through text messages and picture messages. Don't sell yourself online to try to get appeal and draw and, 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 and grab attention in place or to try to puff up a straw man of self-worth, but instead strive for that which exists. I, I would say to you that a woman, a wife who realizes that she is precious in God's sight and beloved as his daughter can be free to seek a heart of imperishable beauty of of a gentle and quiet spirit. So Jesus Christ and, and God the Father and the Holy Spirit look across the Roman Empire. They look across the American culture of this 21st century and they, and, and they simply just say, look, here's the deal. Women, stop selling yourself to try to get these boys to chase after you, but instead look after a godly man who will love you for your heart. Look at this question here. We know that braiding hair and gold jewelry and clothes are not bad. So why is a heart that is gentle and peaceable better in God's eyes than hairstyles and, and clothing? 
Because it helps people to see and it helps the wife to understand the preciousness of herself that God sees. To not settle and, and cheapen yourself with just saying my only worth is in the appeal that I have and the way that I look. But to say that my worth is of precious and an imperishable value. This is how God sees me. This is how God sees wives. Like the Roman Empire and the American culture, he does not downgrade women simply by their appearance, but instead elevates them and goes, not only, not only are you precious in my sight, but you can have an eternal and precious beauty that will exist forever. And that will free your heart and not allow you to be trapped by the cover of magazines and the swipes on social media and the way that says you're supposed to be. But instead you could find freedom. So the Roman culture says you're only property. The American culture says you only have value if you have appeal that draws the desires of others. And God says, no, you have a dignity and value and worth, wife, that is beyond the spectrum of beauty. In fact, it is built into who God is. Because God made man and God made woman. And they are both precious to him. You are a daughter of God. So don't date with, don't get engaged with, don't marry with a guy that isn't going to strive to see you in a greater and greater way as God does. Look at verses 5 and 6 as we talk about wives even more here as it begins to kind of sum up this section and passage of scripture. For, for this is how, so you're like, I don't know about that Lord, I don't know about this this preciousness and this adorning and the culture's like this and it's nice to, to be liked and, and I want to be loved and, and this seems to get me there faster but it isn't, it's not true love and, and, and all this takes place and God's like, let me just remind you verse 5 and 6 why this is so important. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves. This is how they did it. In the days of the Old Testament, the days of purity and focus, and even in the days of today, by submitting themselves to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham before the law even existed, she called him Lord, and you are her children, wives, and women, if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. A, a Christian who is full of hope displays with her life submission to her husband. She has hope that her bad husband can become good by the power and grace of Jesus Christ. She has hope that her good husband can become even greater in her, his relationship with Jesus Christ and God and the Holy Spirit because she knows that her actions can lead him to salvation. She knows that her actions and her worth are unchanging in God's eyes. That she is, as it says in verse 4, precious to God. And for the good of others and for the good of those who sees, she can pursue in this leave this way. Now here's what I love about the end of verse 6. It says to do good and to not fear anything that is frightening. Now, the, the Greek word that lasts in that word frightening is a mixture of alarm and amazement. So you take amazement, you take alarm, you put that together, you've got something that's frightening. And I know that as we read through these scriptures and these texts, you may find yourself in a frightening situation. Man, this is hard. How am I going to do this? He doesn't... He doesn't love me like Christ loves the church and he doesn't pursue after me in a way that, that the Bible says that he should do it. But the Bible says that like, look, we do these things. Wives love their husbands and submit to their husbands because they love God and they submit to who God is. So they just take the natural strength of their relationship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit and begin to live that out with their husbands because they know that can change him for the good, actually for the godly. And they love God enough and they're thankful for his salvation, his death and resurrection. That they go, you know what? Even if he doesn't follow the word, even if he doesn't, I'm not going to give up. I am going to pursue after that. I'm not going to allow myself to be put in a box of adornment to where I only have worth if my hair is braided and I have gold jewelry and I wear clothes and present myself in a certain way. That is not who I'm going to allow the world to make me be. But I'm going to live as a precious daughter of God who is going to go out there and teach younger women that they are precious daughters of God and that they need to be with, with men who believe that they are precious in his sight as well. 
So that's why we do good. And, and when it talks about this fear and the frightening, there's so many uncertainties in marriage. There's so many things that prop up that you can't propel yourself for, whether it's kids or jobs or moving or buying or selling or houses or, or just growing and overcome temptations and, and finding victory in sin and Jesus over sin and Jesus in Christ that we seek and we move. So we come to him with this fear and frightening and know that, you know what? I am faithfully serving the Lord. I am going to trust God to bring about his perfect and good and right will in each and every single one of these things. So what is the result of a wife doing good and submitting to her husband's? The devil doesn't want you to submit to your husband's. The culture is not going to encourage you to submit to your husband's. So what are these results that can happen? First of all, the wife's going to be filled with hope. Imagine that. I, I, I can say this with absolute biblical authority because it's what the Bible says. Regardless of your circumstances, you will be filled with hope from God because your hope is in Jesus and it's not in how your husband conducts himself. Your hope is in the good that God can bring out through your actions of respect and uh, purity and uh, lovingness. And you're not going to fear anything that's frightening. So when something comes in frightening, you know what? I'm not going to fear because praise the Lord, I trust in Jesus. I'm not going to fear because praise the Lord, God's got this. He's all knowing and all powerful and he's everywhere. Praise the Lord, the Holy Spirit is in my life to comfort and guide me. So imagine wives living in a way where you can be wake up every day full of hope, even if you don't feel it. Imagine that no matter what comes to you in your marriage, wife, that you don't have to fear, but you can be without frighteningness. You can just know that you don't have to fear anything that's going on. Because God's in control. Because you're doing good. Your hope is that your, your wife will draw you closer. Uh, well, as a wife, you can draw your husband closer. She's like, I can tell you that. My wife does that for me all the time. She literally brings out God's best in me. And when I w watch her and I, I, I look at her, it inspires me and challenges me to draw closer to Jesus Christ. And, and I want to do that for her. And I want to be that for her. And I want to do that because I love God and he helps me to do those things. The reason you have hope is not because you're following a, a recipe. You have hope because God can do anything. He can do miracles if he needs to. He can move heaven and earth to help your husband. Come on, he can move heaven and earth to help you not be afraid. So based on this message, what can you do as a wife to become more like Jesus? Let's just talk about your worship. Let's just talk about your worship. Worship in such a way that draws your husband closer to God. Do not give up on him. Invite him to church. Talk about the Bible for a couple minutes with him. What you're learning, your, your favorite new Christian song. But your actions, wife, can win him over to faith and maturity in Christ. It is so worth it. It is so worth it. That's what the Bible tells us. That your act, you don't even have to speak a word. You just live your relationship with God in the home and around him. And that, that's more than enough for God to work and to bring them over. So draw your husband closer to God. Yes, through verbal invitation. But use your actions. They often speak louder than words. What about wives in community? When you're out there in community, what's a great way that you can do that? Display God's beauty. Present yourself as a daughter of God, gentle, peaceable, and precious. And never, can I say this? Never exchange your gentle, peaceable daughter of Godness for the imperishable qualities of the worldly trinkets. The world's going to say, Display yourself this way. Show yourself this way. Think of yourself this way. Dress yourself this way. Don't allow them to tweak all of that into bad stuff. Braiding your hair, gold jewelry, um, clothes that you wear, those aren't in and of themselves wrong and evil unless that's the only way you find self-worth. Because God has created you. He made you and you are a good, precious thing to him. So think about that. The next time you're going to work, you're going to your local church to worship, or you're engaging with friends and recharging this, or however that happens, how are you displaying God's beauty and encouraging other women who don't know the joy and freedom and hope in God's beauty to display that as well? There's other ways you can serve too. Think about service and the way that you can serve as a wife. And, and may, this, this may be in the day and age where they say divorce rates are over 50% in a day and age where, where people are just falling out of commitment and falling out of love with people, here's one thing as a wife that you can do. Serve God even if he doesn't. 
Because your love for God is rooted in your relationship with God. It's not rooted, your love for God isn't rooted in how well your husband loves the Lord. Your love for God isn't rooted in anything else than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. His life, death, and resurrection. You are saved by grace through faith alone. And all of that exists separate and apart from how closely your husband walks with the Lord. So wives, your love for God is rooted in your relationship with God which frees you up to serve your husband and serve other wives and help them to find that as it progresses. You have such a great position in this world. Such a great position in this world, wife. To be able to do those things. And to multiply it. To take the truth of these words and to share it. Imagine of all of your friends and how um, other wives could share and set their wives free and go, look, maybe you've got a great Christian husband or you've got a jerk husband. But you can show others how to love well. Let them see you loving your husband in a godly way. Whether he's a great Christian man, he's growing and trying to become one, or he isn't at all. The way we multiply this out and show the world is this. Countries crumble when the homes break down. Cities de degrade and become worse when the homes break down. The family unit suffers when the husband and the wife break down. So my advice to you is show others how to love well. You love God and God loves you. Now do that in your relationship with your husband. And to show that out, follow the guidelines in the text that exists and is modeled here. Remember the one thing. Remember the one thing. Wives are precious and perfectly placed by God. He puts you there so that your husband may see what it is to see a woman on fire for Jesus Christ. To see a woman who is out there going, look, this is what it is to live serve. When he's an idiot and he's a knothead and he's in the doghouse and you're like, here's the grace of God. Here's how this works and rolls. Here's the path of redemption and reconciliation in and through Jesus Christ together. You are precious, you are perfectly placed, and you are put there with a purpose. So please seek out and to strive and move after that. Wives, you are so important to the kingdom of God. You are so important to God. Let's pray. God, as we pray and as we seek and as we discern what your will is, we want to pray, first of all, for salvation. For all of those who have found themselves here, who maybe they're looking for a wife, they're wanting to know what it is to be a biblical wife, but we want to pray for their salvation because that's where it starts. The path to being a godly wife is being a Christian first. You, as an individual, confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. Because with your heart you believe, and your mouth you confess. Once that takes place, then God's very best can begin to freely flow. You can find greater depths of hope in your marriage. You can find greater depths of, of strength to be loving and peaceful and respectful and, and uh, obedient and, 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 and submit and, and, and to be able to love in a way because you're going, I'm already doing this with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, so it's just natural that I do this with my husband. And find redemption in a depth that can only come in the Christian faith when, when spouses are in a relationship. Then we pray for all of those who are not yet saved. The young women, the older women, may they find salvation. And anyone else who's listening, if you're not saved by grace through faith, if you're not a Christian, be born again now. Pray that prayer. Ask God to forgive you for all your wrongdoings, all your sins. And thank him for saving you from the wages of sin, which is death and hell. And for all of those... Christian wives that are out there, Lord, I pray that you will just shore them up, to use the coastal term we have here at the beach, to, to encourage them and, and prop them up and, and to help them to know that, that not only are you for them, but you're behind them and you're going before them to help and protect. So strengthen them and help them to see that their, their hope is in God and that the fruit will bear out as God does the work in the husband and help them to see how, how powerful and precious they are and how they are placed right where that is. May they be praying for a deep commitment to you, Lord, a deeper one and a deeper commitment to their husband. And Lord, we also pray that if there are any wives that find themselves in an unbiblical, abusive relationship, that they will seek help. That they will find freedom in Christ that they will find redemption and protection and following the Holy Spirit as he guides them. 
So Lord, may the Holy Spirit come close to the Christian wives and help them discern the right and appropriate paths. And if they don't even need to, don't even speak a word. Just start living closer to God and letting that spill out in the home, spill out in the workplace, spill out in the local church, spill out where they recharge. And as a husband, Lord, I just thank you and praise you for these more precious than gold and rubies, more precious than anything on this earth. I would not trade my wife for anything. She literally is my better half and brings out my best. Thank you, Lord, that you instill in these Christian wives and women and in these teenage women as they grow that they might know what it is to be precious and that they are. We love you, Lord. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. Have a great and wonderful rest of the day.